Good day, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Uh, this is question six, extracted from one of the past question papers. And this question is on the weighted uh, average method. I have already dealt in one of my other recordings with uh, the topic named uh, FIFO, or where we record our inventory in the using the FIFO method. Now we are in the weighted average method. We are required in 6.1 to enter the above transactions into the stock ledger card using the weighted average method. So we are very clear in terms of uh, what we are required to do. And we are provided with transactions from the first day of the month of February up until the 28th day of the month of February. And now we are to enter all this information in the stock ledger card that I have already drawn uh, before you. And it is very important to know how to draw the stock ledger card that the first column or the first heading, it is purchases, uh, where we record all the purchases that took place during the current period. And we record here issues or sales. <clears throat> we say issues in the case where we are producing the product that means we buy material and we issue it into the production department so that becomes issues but in the case where we buy a finished product and we sell it to a customer <clears throat> then that becomes sales so that is why it can be issues it can be sales depending to either we are producing the product or we are buying a complete product and we sell to a customer. So now I will be uh, recording everything here. Now it says in question six, the following was recorded for stock item ASP 200, a direct material item that is used in the production of Jacob's tea, one of their best selling product. So this Jacob tea is one of their best selling product and remember we are not here buying and selling the jacobs tea we are buying and processing the raw material in order to become the uh, jacobs tea so now that is why i will be using the column that says issues because we buy material and we issue it into the production department we don't sell it now number one is an opening inventory or opening stock of raw material and the opening uh, uh, stock of raw material is 850 kgs uh, of material, 850 kgs of material uh, at 880 cents per kg. So now because this is an opening balance, then it must be recorded under our opening balance. There is our balance. Then under our balance, we need to say number of units is 850. <clears throat> And the cost per unit uh, was eight rand uh, eighty cents. So now we say eight rand eighty cents. Multiply this by eight hundred ten fifty. We get seven thousand four hundred ten eighty as uh, the cost of the opening raw material. Then now we look at the second transaction. The second transaction tells us that. Uh, we purchased or the way purchases uh, of 3,750 kgs of material at 928 cents per kg. And you can see that these are the kgs and the cost is also per kg. This becomes very important as you advance your knowledge in costing uh, that these two must always be aligned when you are going to be multiplying them. So now uh, very clear that the cost for the second purchase for, for the current month purchase or current period purchase on the 2nd of February is 928 cents but the previous purchase of the opening stock which the uh, previous purchase took place in the previous period it was at 880 cents so we can see that our prices are different and whenever there is a purchase we need to determine the weighted average uh, price per unit. Whenever there is a purchase, we need to determine the weighted average uh, price per unit. So now let us go ahead and we record the 3,750 units uh, that were bought on the 2nd of February and they were bought at 928 cents. 
and the total cost will be the sum of 928 cents multiplied this by 3750 kgs of material then this will give us the total cost of the material that was bought which is 34,800 rands. So now this is the total cost of the material that was bought during the year, which is on the 2nd of February. Now we need to then now record this under our balance. We need now have to highlight the fact that our previous material was bought at a different price. It was at 8 rand 80 cents and the current one it was at it, it is at 9 rand 28 cents so now that means in this case we need to determine the weighted average cost uh, price per unit how do we do that we take the total units of the previous pages plus the total units of the current pages then we write them uh, under our uh, units column then how do we do that we say 850 <coughs> plus 3750 and this gives us the total of 4,600 units. Remember, we still need to determine the weighted average cost per unit. So how do we do that? We add again our total uh, amounts, meaning we add our total column and we add our total units. <clears throat> so we need to add our total cost column. And our total cost column is 7,480 plus uh, 34,800 plus 34,800 and this gives us a total of uh, 42,280. So now from here, what do we do now? We need to say total cost divide by total units, meaning 42,280 divide by 4,600 this gives us nine rand and nineteen cents. So this becomes our weighted average cost per unit. Nine rand and nineteen cents. Nine rand and nineteen cents becomes our weighted average cost uh, per unit. That means when we issue the inventory now into the production department, we will issue it at uh, the weighted average uh, price per unit. Now, I hope I made myself very clear with that. Make sure that you master how to determine this um, weighted average uh, price per unit. After every purchase, you must make sure that you determine the weighted average price per unit. Then now we go further uh, to the next transaction. The next transaction says uh, to us that uh, on the 7th of the month of February, we issued 1,700 kgs of material to the production department. And please highlight that it does not say sales. It says issue. That, that is why now under my, 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 my table, I have the column or the, the, the item that says issue or statement that says issue. So now we issued 1,700 kgs and they don't give us the price. Why they don't give us the price? It is because this 1,700 is from that 800 units and part of that is from the 3,750. Of which is, is two different prices, which was 8.80 and 9.28. And the average of that was 19.19 or was 9.19 cents. So the reason why they don't give us um, the issue price when it comes to the weighted average cost uh, with the weighted average method, it is because we have calculated already the weighted average price or cost per unit as 919 cents. So now 1,700 units were issued. So we go under our column of uh, issues, we say 1,700 units were issued. At what price? At the weighted previous average price that we calculated which is 9 rand 19 cents. So now what we need to do is to say 9 rand 19 cents multiply this by 1,700 and this will give us um, 15,623. This will be our uh, total cost. Therefore now an adjustment must be done here and an adjustment must also be done here. <coughs> 
Now, if you say an adjustment must be done, how do we do the adjustment? We apply the same principle. We say 4,600 minus 1.7 because 1.7 was issued. So we say 4,600 minus uh, 1,600, 700. Then this gives us the <coughs> remainder of the inventory. And the remainder of the inventory, it is 2,900 units. 2,000. 900 units in terms of cages not completed units now we have this one completed then we <clears throat> do the same thing with the cost we say uh, the total cost uh, minus the total cost of the issued uh, material that will give us uh, the adjusted cost after after the issue then we say 42,228 42,000 210 80 42, 80 minus uh, 15623 this gives us 26657 this gives us 26657 the price does not change after the issue the price does not change after the issue i want to highlight that after you have issued the inventory the weighted average price does not change that means you don't determine a new or another weighted average cost per unit because of the issue <clears throat> so you keep the same uh, weighted average cost that you uh, you had previously then now we <clears throat> have to listen to the next uh, question and we see what does it has for us now the next question is um, number 14 or on the 14th day of the month we purchased 4,800 cages of material at 10 rand 20 cents per kg <clears throat> and we can see that the price is again not the same as the previous price and the previous previous price and by the way this price is not the same as the nine rand twenty, uh, the nine rand nineteen cent that we have currently as our weighted average cost per unit. So they are not the same. That means now, obviously, <clears throat> we need to determine the new weighted average price per uh, kg. Remember, we are dealing with the cages per kg. So now that means we need to determine the weighted after we have recorded this purchase of 4,800 cages of material at 10 rand 20 cents. So now we have to record the 4,800 cages at 10 rand 20 cents. At 10 rand 20 cents, then you say 4,800 multiply this by 10 rand 20 cents, it will give us the total cost. Remember, we purchased it. So it must be recorded under the column name purchases. Then this will give us the total uh, cost of our purchase of material, which is 48,960. 48,960. <clears throat> Remember, every purchase must affect our balance column. And every issue must adjust our balance column. Let me repeat that every transaction that get to be recorded under our purchases, it must uh, make adjustment under our balance column. And every issue that, that we make must make an adjustment or an effect in our balance column. So this is very important to note. And remember again, every purchase you must, after every purchase, you must determine the new weighted average cost per unit and uh, now that is uh, made very clear how do we do that remember again we said it previously for us to do, do that we need to say our current units that we have available as in our balance plus the units that we bought now that means we need to say the 4800 that is bought now plus 2,900 that is available in our storage. Then this will give us a total of 7,700 um, kgs of material. And I want to highlight the fact that is kgs of material, not the completed units. 
so we have 7,700 kgs. Then after what do we do again? We take the total cost of the available material. We add it to the total cost of the new material that is just bought now. Then we write that under our total column. So now what do I mean by that? I mean that you must say uh, 26,000, which is uh, this 26,000 of the existing material. 26,657 plus uh, our 48,960. This gives us 75,617. This gives us 75,617. Now, how do we <clears throat> determine this weighted average uh, cost now per unit? We say our total cost of all the material after we said the existing material plus the new material, the total cost of that divide this by the total units, which is the 2.9 that is existing material plus the 4.8 that we just bought now. Then after doing that, we then divide in order for us to get to the weighted average uh, cost per unit. Then uh, how do we do that? Once again, it is 75,617. Remember, they, the 75,617, divide by 7,700 units, which is the 7.7 .7 units, 2.9 plus uh, 4,800, which is the current purchase. Then how much do we get? We get 982 cents. We get 982 cents. This is our new weighted average price per unit. And I want to remind you once again that whenever there is a purchase, you must determine the new weighted average cost or price per unit. Remember, uh, when I'm saying determine, that means the purchase price of the current material is not the same as uh, the existing weighted average price per unit that we have calculated already. <clears throat> now let us uh, proceed uh, on that same note. Then we listen now to the next question that we have. The next question is telling us that we issued 3,000 kgs of material to the production department. <clears throat> now, once again, there was a need for us to produce more inventory. And for us to produce our goods and services, which is our Jacob's Tea. Remember, our product is the delicious Jacob's Tea, more especially in winter. Now. Uh, that we need to produce that product and in order for us to produce we need to use the material now we are issuing the material in order for it to be processed in the production department to become the jacobs tea that we need so there's a need or a demand for another production or other productions of units then now the production department needs 3000 units and we issue to them 3000 uh, kgs of material uh, to this department and again the price is not given once again why because we have calculated the previous weighted average cost per unit that we must use as the cost of the material that was issued into the production department now we know that it is 3000 that was issued then now in this 3000 we need to say 3000 was issued at what price it must be at the current weighted average price per unit which is uh, 982 cents, 982 cents. So now we need to say uh, 982 cents times by 3,000 units in order for us to see the cost of the material that was issued to the production department or the total cost of the 3,000 material cages that was issued into the production department which is 29,460 rands. This is the cost of the material that was issued into the production department. Therefore, now, remember, we need to make adjustments. Out of the 7,000 units, we no longer have all of them because um, 3,000 has been issued. So now, if 3,000 has been issued, then we need to adjust the 7,000 units. So now how do we adjust this 7,700 units? And I've written this in the same line, which now inconvenience my workings. And I don't know how I managed to do that. So we have 3,000 here at the bottom. 
uh, sorry for that uh, not uh, noticed mistake then it is 29,460 it should be in the separate line because it's a separate transaction not in the same transaction as the previous transaction so now we say out of the 7,700 uh, kgs we issued 3,000 that means what will be left will be 4,700 kgs let me just use a different color I prefer to use different colors sometimes uh, to things of this nature. We have 4,700 units because 7.7 .7 minus 3,000 will uh, leave you with um, 4,700 units. <clears throat> and once again, what we do, we also need to take the cost now and minus the cost. The cost of the issued, uh, we deduct it from the cost of the uh, remaining or the cost of the previous um, uh, units <clears throat> that means we take that 75,617 uh, we minus the cost of the material that was issued in order for us to get to the adjusted cost after an issue has taken place so now that means we have to say uh, minus 75,617 uh, and this will give us the total of 46,157 rands. Remember, after we have issued material into the production department, the cost per unit does not change. So we don't determine the new weighted average cost per unit or per kg after the issue to the production department. We make an adjustment on in our weighted average uh, price per unit when there is a, a, a purchase of material. But if there's no purchase, uh, please don't make an adjustment. <clears throat> now, uh, let us then again now look at, at, at the uh, close last transaction. Now, the close last, which is the second last transaction, what does it say? The second last transaction says we returned to the supplier how many units 800 kgs of a uh, material that was purchased on the 14 of um, <clears throat> 14 of the, the month of february now why the date becomes very important is because when we return to the supplier we don't return at the weighted average cost per kg or per unit we return at the price we bought from the supplier for so that is very important because if we bought something from the supplier 10 rand uh, 20 cents when we return obviously we need to return at the same price that we bought it for but uh, the weighted average uh, adjustment of the price is only for internal papers not for external papers now uh, that means if we are returning uh, some of those units that we bought at 10 rand 20 cents we need to return this 800 at that price not at a weighted average a price per kg or per unit so now we can see there's a return remember what are we returning or who are we returning to i want to highlight that we are returning to the supplier remember the supplier is the person whom we bought the inventory from that means previously there was a purchase so now if we're returning back to the, the supplier that means we have to be returning in the same column, which is the column where a purchase has uh, uh, took place. So now we say 800 units uh, are to be returned, and that has to be in the next uh, column once again. 800 units um, are to be returned, then we need to say 800, and they must be returned at the price they were bought for, which is uh, 10 rand 20 cents. So now what do we do? We say, um, 800 times by 10 rand 20 cents therefore now they will have 8,160 rands now whenever there is a return you must adjust your weighted average price or cost per unit and I'm saying another point now previously I said when there is a purchase you must determine the new weighted average price and when there is a return back to the supplier, you must also determine another 
weighted average price per unit. Why that is the case is because when you return, you return at the old purchase price. You don't return at the current weighted average cost per unit or price per unit. That is why now there must be uh, an adjustment um, of the weighted average cost per unit whenever we return back to the supplier. But when we're returning to the storage department, we don't adjust anything. Remember I said it's only for external papers that an adjustment must take place. And again, when we buy, I want to highlight this, when we buy from external, this is external, when we buy from external, we make an adjustment. And again, when we return to external, we make adjustment in our weighted average cost per unit. But when transactions are in between uh, the departments of the company, meaning from the storage department to the production department, there is no adjustment of the weighted average cost per unit or per kg. Uh, now let me uh, proceed on that same note. I think I've highlighted enough what I wanted to highlight to you. Now again, if we have returned, please don't forget to write brackets here to indicate that this is uh, a decrease uh, of our purchases. In other words, this is our purchases return for those who are the masters of financial accounting. This is the purchases return that will be recorded in the purchases return journal. So now out of the 4.7, 800 went back to the supplier. So now we need to say out of the 4,700, we need to deduct 800. After we deduct 800, there will only be 3,900 units that will be left. Then now we need to say uh, the total cost again minus from the total cost so that we get to the adjusted total cost so that after we can determine the new and weighted average cost per kg or per unit. So now we say, uh, say 46,157 minus 8,160. How much do we get? We get a total of 37,997. We get 37,997. Then after, remember, in order for us to get the weighted average cost per unit, we always need to know the total adjusted cost and the total adjusted units then you say the total adjusted cost divided by the total adjusted units, then that will give us the weighted average cost or the new weighted average cost. 37,997 divided by 3,900 will give us the new weighted average cost per unit, which is now 974 cents. 974 cents. This will be our new and weighted average cost per unit. Now let us read the last sentence and see what does it has for us and we analyze and pack then after we close. It says <clears throat> we received the 800 kgs of material back in the store which is in the storage. I want to specify that this is the storage. Remember we have where we, we have what is called storage and storage that is where we store the material. We keep it safe. Then we have production department. One just to draw this uh, difference between the two. We have production departments. These departments are two. This is the department and this is the department. When we receive material from the supplier, it gets to be put in the storage or in the warehouse. Sometimes this can be called the warehouse. The material gets to be stored in the warehouse. Then now, whenever we need to use this material for production, then we transfer it to the production department. Sometimes the production department can say, you have given us more material, guys, from the storage department. We are retaining some of the material. So this is what had happened. In other words, when they say received, it is the storage department that is receiving the material from the production department because we gave them too much material than they needed for the production of the given period. So they say, no guys, we don't need the 800, please take it back. So now we have to receive this 800. And remember, this is still within the business. 
it does not affect the external people. And I said to you, whenever transactions are within the business, there is no external transaction that has taken place. Then our weighted average cost per unit remain as it was calculated previously. What does that mean? That means out of the 800 that we received, we will still keep the same weighted average. This is not going to change, guys. Now I'm highlighting this with uh, much importance. Now, again, this is an 800 of the return at what price? At 9 rand 74 cents. 9 rand 74 cents. Then this will give us how much we need to say 9 rand 74 cents times by uh, the the 800 units that were returned to the storage department or to the warehouse this gives us a total of 7,792 7,792 uh, just uh, more space occupied there because of not so good writing 7,792 so now you also uh, put that bracket indicating that this is a return so in other words we we, we have uh, issues return or a, a return from uh, the production uh, department back to the storage department. So now that means we need to say out of the material that we had 3.9 and remember this is the production department. Uh, this was from the production department. So now we have to acknowledge that this is a return of the material. So if this is the return we are reducing our issues, but we are going to have more material in the uh, storage. Remember, this is the storage department. This is the storage. This is where we store the material. And whenever we issue material, remember, we took part of that 4.7. We transfer it to the production. So when we say issues, we are issuing to where? We are issuing to the production department, meaning we issue material to the production department and we take it from the storage. I'm saying the storage, although this is a balance, but this is where we store material. That is why whenever we buy material, we have to transfer it to what I can say the storage in inverted commas. So now that means uh, this is a return. I just want to highlight this uh, because they are quite important. So now that means uh, we are now receiving more material. The material that was previously issued, which was 3,000, which was taken from that 7,000. It was from 7,000 transferred here. Now they are saying part of this must go back to the storage, meaning now our last column for balance must also be adjusted in terms of uh, this transaction. So now that means uh, we need to say now we have received more units, 3,000 plus 800, 3.9 plus 800, it will be 3,900 uh, plus 800. This will give us how much? 4,700. This will give us 4,700 because we are receiving more material. So now we are saying plus uh, the one that we have received. We are receiving in our storage. It is from the production department, which is the work in process when you continue with your costing um um uh, with, the, with, with the costing course uh, you will get to meet with the work in process and you'll understand this very much further what do i mean when i say work in process then now remember the price per unit does not change because the transaction is internal there is no external external person that is affected here so now when transactions are internal don't make any uh, effort to be worried about the adjustment there is no adjustment that has to take place. Then after what do we do now? We say 7,792. We add that to the 39,000. Then we say now 7,792 rands uh, plus 37,997. This gives us 45,789. This is 45,789. And you just drop and keep that weighted average cost per kg as it is or per unit. Why? Because the transactions are internal and there was no change in prices. Then after you can calculate your totals at the bottom here. Uh, totals at the bottom. Then let us uh, check our totals at the bottom. What would they be? 
uh, just draw a line here uh, then you can calculate this is our total of the closing inventory then you can draw a line here at the bottom and I'm not going to be calculating all those totals then after you can uh, calculate the total of the uh, purchases total of the issues sometimes you can be required to calculate the total uh, units that were issued and the value of the units uh, that were issued or the unit that were purchased or the cost of purchases so you can just calculate the total here at the bottom and you get your figures uh, not the unit the cost per unit is not necessary uh, it, it can be the units and it can be the units to say how many units are left at the end of the year we have 4.7 units whatever the case might be but sometimes you can be required to uh, calculate the totals there at the bottom with that guys thank you you've been a wonderful audience i hope i came to your level uh, of understanding as a student wherever you are and however your understanding is to the best of my ability thank you very much